Kayla Reed here from Polka Dot Overload with a demo of how I try on sewing patterns using my customized digital dress form, or croquis. With a little practice, you can plan your sewing wardrobe, design fun details, and play with palettes and fabrics. Best of all, you can preview how design will look on your awesome shape before you cut or even buy your pattern or fabric. Back when I was super pregnant, I used my croquis to plan extensive modifications to non-maternity patterns. So let's talk tools. First, you need a croquis. This could be one you traced by hand in black ink and scanned or drew directly into the computer. Tutorial forthcoming. Here a croquis of myself, my husband, and our little daughter. You'll also need images of your planned fabric, whether you've already purchased it or not. I keep all my fabric stash photos cataloged by color and type in Flickr because I am obsessive. A pressure-sensitive graphics tablet is optional but highly recommended. Finally, you'll need digital image manipulation software with the ability to paint and use layers and patterns. I use Manga Studio and Photoshop, but GIMP is a great open source alternative. So let's get started. I'm going to speed things up, but the entire process usually takes me from 15 minutes to an hour. Here's a grayed out photo of me in a tank top on which I've already drawn my croquis on another layer. For reference, I've pulled up the pattern flats for the Colette Macaron and a photo of Mina from the Sew Weekly wearing her inspirational version. I usually start with one of the key lines of the design, in this case the mock sweetheart neckline. I keep the fabric in mind. Is it stiff, soft, stretchy, and how will it hang from my body in real life? It wouldn't be realistic to draw lots of soft pleats or folds in a stiff fabric with no drape. I also think carefully about ease. In this case, I'm working with a very firm cotton stretch woven, and I plan to make the dress extremely fitted, so I draw the outlines very close to my actual contours, except for the skirt, which is intended to have more of a curved out shape. And I'm actually not certain that that's necessarily what I want. So then I've switched here to the pastille from the Colette Sewing Handbook, um, and I'm going to draw that a little more quickly. This is also a fitted sheath, but it has a different silhouette, and I'd like to see which one I prefer. I'm pretty much sticking to the design, except I've eliminated the pleats toward the hem because they don't really work in my fabric, and I'm adding a belt inspired by the one Una had from Una Does It in her version. Now I've finished both drawings, I'm bringing these layers on top of my colored croquis and playing paper dolls. Uh, you always want to keep separate layers because if you want to add a jacket or a shirt or something else and try different looks, you want to make sure that they don't get stuck together and you can't separate them again. I brought my fabric in here and I'm turning it into a little repeat pattern that I can fill my dresses with. Um, if I was playing with different fabrics, I could try different fabrics at this point. I could try different colors, different palettes, uh, but here I know which fabric I definitely want to use. Um, I've measured the repeat because scale is really important when you're testing out a pattern. Sometimes this, a really beautiful print looks really weird in small scale or in large scale. All right, here you have it, the final sheath dress showdown between the pastille and the macaron, and the winner is the macaron because after all this work, I discovered I didn't have enough fabric for the pastille. So much for careful planning. Thanks so much for watching the tutorial, and please come visit my blog, polkadotoverload.com. Thank you.